delightful song <laughs> for our Friday. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you all sorts of great stuff that we have for today's show. I'm here too, Scott. Yes. Asaph is here as well. And yeah. welcome, uh, guys. We that, was, that was a delightful song, Asaph. I think what that's is the that? theme song to the Patty Dick show. Oh, cool. Okay, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So today we have some um, City Council. We have Flagship Friday. We have some new programming on tonight as well okay. as events Shoot. and yeah. um, a musical notes with Asaph talking about uh, uh, 50s, 60s uh, era uh -huh. um, child star. Awesome. Great. Yeah. But so we'll find out more about her later. Yeah, but of course this weekend is looking nice. So if you want to get out and about this weekend, it's the best opportunity. It is yes, it is currently 28 degrees, but of course with a cold morning, you can expect a really nice, partly sunny day. It's going to be Great. of the high of 62 degrees outside tonight. It'll be about a low of 38. But of course it'll start keeping with those trends by getting warmer into the high 67 on Sunday. And of course um, by Monday, you can expect the showers to start raining in for your work week, but of course, it's nice that we're gonna have a really nice weekend to, so yeah. to get through. Yeah, uh, April showers bring May flowers, so it is now spring. Um, and I do not have the snow report for you guys, I don't know, I time escaped me this morning. But I guess I can only imagine that it hasn't snowed because it's been so nice. Yep, I was showing Noel like Thug Life compilation videos. Yeah, we were busy watching YouTube videos, so I actually don't have anything set up. <laughs> I'll get to that. We just later. need to get in the mood for the morning <laughs> show today. And um, you know, we uh, it's April. It's yeah, April, it's April first. Um, I don't. Re I've never really celebrated it, and like people who celebrate it are kind of annoying to me. Yeah, it's it's today's like, <laughs> April Fool's. Today is my sister's birthday. My oh, sister's yeah. birthday. Her name is April. So it was always a joke that she was like, you know, like a joke and But she's April no fool, fools. right? No, no, she's no fool. She's no fool? No fool at all. No so foo. happy birthday, little sister. Yeah. But we do have some um, new programming on today. Oh, thank God. And uh, for some reason, um, uh, Ron hats. gave me two of the same clip. And he's just like, if you play this one, I'll get you a million dollars. I'm just like, that's your April Fool's joke? OK. I, I hope I don't see you today. <laughs> so Ron probably slapping. does have a million dollars. Knowing Ron, he probably he does have a million vacation. dollars somewhere. Um, he doesn't go on vacation. Um, he doesn't go on vacation. He doesn't take sick days. He doesn't have a. He has a car that he shares with his roommates. He doesn't have a cell phone. I don't think he has a cell phone. Like he probably no, does. He have. had a cell phone, but it was MCAT's cell phone. <laughs> Ron probably has a million dollars. Maybe he saves. Yeah. One he, day he's he just saves. gonna retire early. Yeah. That, I mean, retirement's usually like a sure, like, it's funny, like, some people, as soon as they retire, it's like, uh, they're just dead. Yeah, they're just yeah. dead. It's, it's ridiculous. I it's like, I work too much, now it's time for me just to rest and... <laughs> Sleep when I die, <laughs> when I'm retired. All right, so of course, uh, it is uh, the, another edition of the Wilderness <laughs> Issues Lecture Series, a, a forever ongoing series that will basically yes. probably expand throughout the whole entire summer. Um, but without further ado, here is a little uh, taste of what you guys can see tonight at 9.30. And they're thinking, you know, we have to do this multiple use uh, management. We have to provide some trees, we have to provide some clean water, some wildlife habitat, and we have to provide some wildlands. And so people who wear this hat, you know, they're good guys, they're trying to find Omega, but they have a slightly different perspective as to how much ought to be in wilderness. And, and mind you, I, I have a lot of sympathy for them because they're trying to figure out this balance in a world where there's lots of tugging and pulling and people suggesting that that, that we don't have the omega level. And now I'll put on the hat that I really wear the most, my environmentalist hat, and get you to think about this from the perspective of a real environmentalist. No matter what you're planning, if you plan to drink, Plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. 
knowing you've got friends to support you. Each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, and today is First Friday, so I've got a bunch of art and music events for you for your weekend. Um, so up first, starting at 10 a.m. over at Missoula Art Museum, they have got, they're setting up a show starting at 10, but of course their reception will be at 5, um, and it's for Abby Miller, and her show is called Exit Strategies, and Abby Miller is a sculptural, like a, an artist that makes sculptures, I guess I don't, sculpturist? I'm not sure if that's a word, but but, so she, her artworks are an innovative amalgam of fiber, fashion design, and contemporary large-scale sculpture. Yeah, so that's set, getting set up all day today, and her first Friday reception will start at 5. Um, over the Missoula Public Library, they are participating in National Poetry Writing Month. So over the Public Library, that starts today, starting at 10 a.m., um, you can go in there and I think it's poets who wish to share their work to email. So if you wish to share your work, you can email your poems to C-R-Y-S, it's like C-R-Y stock at missoula.lib.mt.us. But call the Missoula Public Library for more information about that and if you want to get more of a detailed account of what's going on. But it's National Poetry Writing Month and so they're looking for people to participate. Over at Taste Buds Kitchen, starting at 11, they've got a Snow Princess Cupcake Workshop for ages 2 to 6. It's only 20 bucks to drop in. And, um, yeah, bring your little ones. That sounds fun. Over at the Missoula Public Library, we've got yarns starting at noon. This is for those knitters and crocheters to get together and craft and gossip and eat their lunch. Yeah. And then over the Missoula Public Library, uh, our homeboy, Rob P., has got watercolor painting class. Uh, that is from 12 to 2. And he is featuring, let's see, it's just a drop-in class. It's going to focus on um, subject and compositional techniques. Over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, they are making pinwheels at 3.30. Um, and then over at 4, we head over to the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium for Ooh. spider feeding. Yeah. And there's a wine tasting and live music by Larry Hirschberg over at Ten Spoon Vineyard and Winery at 4 p.m. today as well. Mm, sounds delicious. Mm-hmm. I love wine. Um, and music. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flathead Lake Brewing Company, they've got a First Friday artist today. Um, so it's Kimberly Cooney, and she'll be in the Galaxy Lounge starting at 5 until 8, and I do believe that's like the second or third floor of Flathead. Over at Betty's Divine, they've got a show. It's called Interdimensionalism. It's by Rashid Abdel Ghaffur, and it'll feature intricate representations of spatial confluence anchored by a tetrapic? Let's see. Tetra... Yeah, I'm, I don't see it. Tetris? No, it's like a tetrapitic. Te tetrapitic. Huh. I don't know. I'm probably saying it wrong, and I know I know it. But either way, um, he has got a show coming up. Yeah, it's called Interdimensionalism. It should be pretty interesting. You can grab a glass of wine, check out the show, and it'll be at Betty's Divine. <coughs> tetrapitic? Oh. Yeah, tetrapitic. If you say it fast enough, it, it could sound right. Tetrapitic. Which is a portal upon which the center may not hold. What? It sounds crazy. Go over there, you guys. <laughs> it sounds... Ooh, it sounds really... I'm swooning over here. <laughs> over at E3 Convergence Gallery, um, Yvette K... Let's see. Gelsrud? Man, everyone has all these crazy last names I can't pronounce. Yeah, stop it. She has got... I know, I just won't. Um, her show is called My Inner World. It's at E3 Convergence Gallery. And it's a telltale peek into an artist's inner world and current landscape. Each painting depicts a different thought, hope, dream, struggle, vision, or victory. And reveals her laugh at life humor as well as her taste in music. Awesome. Um, there's a gal named Nancy. She's uh, doing new acrylic paintings over at Gallery 709 in Montana Art and Framing at 5. Uh, her new acrylics are inspired by colors and textures in nature, especially native plants in the landscape. Um, over at the Tro, which it seems like it's a new gallery, it's located at 2106 Clements Road. They have got oil paintings by Ter Teresa G. Warner, um, Western Introspective. Starts at 5 p.m. And um, so she uses her experiences living and traveling in the West for her inspiration for this show. 
Over at the Radius Gallery, they've got a First Friday showing. It starts at 5 p.m. Um, and so it's it's surrealism art in action. So it's all in one. It's like bringing theater, the circus, and the last best dream to one place. That sounds pretty interesting. Um, over the artist shop, they've got a, an art show called Looking Up, Looking Down Collage by Jennifer Ogden. So she took pieces from business envelopes and magazines that filtered through her mailbox, recontextualized the textures, colors and patterns of temporal media, and combined them to suit her own people and places. That's pretty cool. That's kind of like it, easy to show you how, or it shows you how easy it is to do art with your mail and like in your own home. That's awesome. So that's at five and that's at the artist shop. Over at Bathing Beauties, they've got their fifth annual bead challenge at 5 p.m. The challenge is Year of the Woodland Creature. Um, so people will have an opportunity to vote throughout the month, so be sure to shop by and show your support. Great. Um, over at Berkshire Hathaway, Montana Properties, they've got a First Friday, which is, this is just like a real estate place. Um, and they're showing traffic signal box public art projects. So they're just going to be showing the past uh, traffic signal boxes. Yeah, great. Um, over at Gecko Designs, they've got an artist reception. Kate McCain, or McCain. Kate McCain, it's a multi layered wood block prints that highlight intriguing tones and patterns of animals, landscapes, and other natural manifestations. Um, over the Missoula Urban Develop Demonstration Project, they've got a First Friday Mud Mingle, which that's pretty fun. Um, and so it's going to be featuring Adelaide Gale's Every's, Adelaide Gale Every's work, featuring found and salvaged objects that will be on display at Mud Central as part of their First Friday. Cool. Over the Clay Studio of Missoula, they've got a Pot Sketch 2016 opening reception preview. So this features drawings and ceramic artworks from local, national, and international emerging and established artists. Um, all artwork is part of a silent online and live auction to raise funds for the Clay Studio facilities and programs. Over the Badlander, um, Opportunity, Opportunity Resources and the Badlander are teaming up to give a first Friday show from, from the people at Opportunity Resources. So art will be displayed throughout the Palace Hotel Gallery, the Golden Rose, and the Badlander. Uh, they'll have drink specials, and each drink purchase donates a portion of the proceeds to help Opportunity Resource. So that starts at 6. Um, and then we've got some music. Over the uh, Union Club, they've got Irish music section at 6. The Roxy Theater has got a CD re release party film, uh, Lester Leaps In. Uh, that's a 30-minute film that oh, features yeah. Jeff Medley and Lulu Delphine. Um, and they're also going to have art and discussions, and it's going to be great. I saw that article in the paper. It was... Um, what did it say, Scott? Well, it showed Mike Strainbringer, like, directing a bunch of people who were dancing. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that. Okay, so that now this is his 30-minute film. It's going to yeah. be the Roxy, right? Yeah. Based yeah. on his life moving to moving from one place to Missoula. Oh, wow. I barely awesome. remember what the article was about because I was just like, and I, I like looked at the paper. I was like, oh, it's the Missoulian. And I, <laughs> Scott and I pretty judge the Missoulian very hard. I think you guys everybody should, in Missoula judged the Missoulian. You guys should hear us when we like open the paper. <laughs> you always know when it's a slow day for news when they have like, the headline is about people racing or yeah. kids I, I, doing something. I'd rather do taxes. Yeah, right, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, oh, chloroform. <laughs> oh, where's the ads? I'm only in it for the ads. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the internet. Ooh. No, no okay. <laughs> okay, moving on everyone. <laughs> Over the VFW, they've got an April Fool's show. Uh, starting at 9 p.m., they have Carnes, Sam Bones, Rat Bath, Ancient Fours, and Whiskey Hoofs. Uh, it's only $3 if you're 21 and older. It's an 18 and up show, so five bucks for those young ones. Charlie Parr will be at the Badlander at 9 p.m. Uh, it is $14 a day of show. Band in Motion will be at the Union Club at 9.30. They're always a really, really fun band. Pay Dirt is at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. And then uh, over the Top Hat Lounge at 10, we've got some indie rock. I don't know how much their tickets are. They are they do cost. It's not free. Um, it's San Furman and Esme Patterson. And they're going to be showcasing some indie rock. Yeah. But that's pretty much what I've got for you guys for Friday. As always, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net to find out all the other activities that are going on during the day. But now we're going to switch gears and we're going to go over to ASAP segment. Before I start, I just wanted to say they announced on the radio that the Taco Bell organization is going to buy the Liberty Bell 
And oh. they're, going, they're going to call it the Liberty Taco Bell. Oh, that's awful. I did not even know that a they could buy it. Oh. oh. <laughs> you didn't catch that, did you? ASAP, good job. What? You're terrible. You're <laughs> yeah, just didn't, awful. Didn't you catch that? Yeah, I said the I said the Taco Bell organization is buying the Liberty. Well, it's Bell. not that far fetched. I and believe that. And they're going to call it the Liberty Taco Bell. I believe <laughs> that. That was well. Being the landscape, yeah. being the landscape that it is in Missoula, I would I not doubt. That. In Montana, I'm not in Montana. <laughs> good. It, it, being the landscape of nowadays of capitalism, you, you're just like, wow, wow, that's crazy. I, I just thought you would have caught that when that I first was said really Taco good. Bell. No, no, that was no, really no, good. no, no, no. Anyway, that's my brain. Because it doesn't so. surprise me. Like, of course, Taco Bell would try to like buy someone else. Out, yeah, you know? and call it the Liberty Taco Bell. Oh, Got it. And, and it's like, okay. <laughs> and like our tone of our reaction to it is just like we're just like it's like accepting it. It's yeah. Like, we're not really like, oh, this would never happen. It was just like, yeah. oh, this always happened. That, that's kind of how we're. Of course, it's psychologically, happening. we're just like, of course it happens. <laughs> I know it's not terrible. It's a terrible way of like thinking about life. It's just like, oh, of oh, course it's gonna happen. It was like a matter of time. I'm not surprised about everything. Yeah. Oh, is that a giant tidal wave? Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I was totally expecting that. Giant I was on the beach the after all. Oh, weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good joke for today. Yeah, Thank good you, job, Seth. Seth. But anyway, yeah. this isn't an April Fool's joke. This is real. Shirley Jones just celebrated her 82nd birthday yesterday. The actress on the Partridge Family. Oh, wow. So I wanted to wish her a happy birthday yeah. before we start a story. Okay, let's get started. Our guest for the day, her first major starring role was playing Helen Keller with the actress Anne Bancroft as Annie Sullivan in the Broadway version of The Miracle Worker which ran October 59 to 61. And then from there, it was turned into a movie in 1962 where our guest played Helen Keller again. And of course, the person we're talking about is Anna Marie Duke, known to the world as Patty Duke. And there she is playing this character, the movie version. Also, she was 16 years old in real life when she did this movie version, and she's the youngest person at that time to receive an Academy Award in a competitive category. Wow. And this is Anne Bancroft on the left. She, she, we talked about her earlier. Yeah, she'll be best known for um, the movie with Dustin Hoffman, The Graduate. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's her. Oh, is she the, are you trying She's to She's Mrs. Robinson. Oh. Ah. Trying to seduce me, Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> anyway, she, Anne Bancroft was a great actress in her own right. But getting back to our guest, Patty Duke, Patty Duke was an American actress of stage, film, television, and best known as a teen star, winning an Academy Award, not only for Helen Keller, but she also had her own comedy show called The Patty Duke Show, where she played twin cousins, <laughs> Patty and um, Kathy Lane. Kathy Lane was the high class cousin, <laughs> got to travel all around the world, and Patty liked her rock and roll. <laughs> so that was a very funny um, show. Let's show this clip and then I'll say some final things about our guest. No, she's not here, Pop. W A T E R, water. It has a name. W A T. being born blind and deaf yeah I that's guess. unfortunate what happened with the real Helen Keller but she wanted to do some great things when they found a way to communicate with her so this portrayal here is a great portrayal of this film and this is where uh, Patty Duke's character discovers water she and she tries to talk and speak the word water in that scene anyway finally um, getting back to Patty Duke um, she has received 10 Emmy Award nominations and three, okay, she received 10 nominations, three Emmy Awards, two Golden Globe Awards throughout her career, and she was also the president of the Screen Actors Guild from 85 to 88. 
she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 1982 because even though she did some great movies and stuff, she would do some unusual sporadic things on the set and then they figured out what was wrong with her and she went on to become an advocate for people that struggle with mental health. Nice. We lost Patty Duke just last Tuesday at the age of 69 on the 29th of March. And even though she's gone now, she left the world some great films, some great comedy, great singing, if you can look her up. She was an accomplished singer, too. Nice. What did she die from? I, that doesn't, my notes don't, oh, wait a minute. It says ruptured intestine. Oh, sepsis. goodness. Sepsis, yeah. Oh. Well, she might have had some health issues leading up to that, too. Yeah. And I assume she probably passed away very quickly. When oh, I would happened. think so, with a ruptured intestine that yeah. really puts all the toxins in your body. Yeah. What a good actress. Yeah, that she was scene, a fantastic actress, yeah. Like, she definitely deserves, a, she won an Emmy for that? Well, she actually, she got 10 nominations in her career. She won three of the Emmys out of the 10 and two Golden Globes. Wow, so cool. So that's, that's quite an accomplishment for being a child star. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. So. God bless Patty. She, she's gone now and uh, in heaven, most likely. And uh, she's she left it. the world some great movies, and I'll end it that way. Nice. Thanks, Asa. Thank you very much, Asa. Sure. Yep. It is First Friday, and here is an art clip highlighting, um, I'll actually give you a little tease of what you guys can check out at the Mizzou Art Museum today for First Friday. <laughs> We're back. So I just want to give you all a heads up. So tomorrow, um, over the uh, at the Southgate Mall is Nonprofit Awareness Day, I do believe, or Nonprofit Appreciation Day. Yep. So I will be at the mall all day long tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 6 uh, promoting our summer camp. And I will be at MCAT all day, well, 1 to 5, one to five. doing um, stop animation drop-ins. Yeah. Um, it's where your kid aged 9 to 13, you know, like roughly 9 to 13. We you come can, in for $10 and eight. we make a stop animation video and sometimes if we have time we make some live action stuff as well. Yep. Yeah. We might as well call it MCAT drop-in from now and That's what we're going to do next, 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 next season. Next season. Next on, season. Next season on MCAT's kids stuff. Yeah, next season on MCAT's children's programs. <laughs> I think it's better to just do MCAT drop-in. Yeah. Because we do We do a so whole much. Mix. And why do we just have to cut ourselves yeah. off at just stop animation? I agree. Well, stop animation stations, like maybe like in the studio, mm -hmm. and then everywhere else would be just like, Ooh. And now we know how popular and successful this is. Yeah. So now we know how to do it. We got it under our belt. We yeah. did almost, we've done a whole, almost a full school year of doing this. This is pretty awesome. Yeah, so if you guys want to come on by, you can uh, learn more about MCAT. You can hear all about our summer camps and our children's programs. Um, and that is, yeah, yeah tomorrow you, at 10, from 10 to 6. Yep, and you can find out more information about this by logging onto our website, MCAT.org, where we have all our summer programs. And all you got to do is click on this link picture, and you can download a form where you can fill it out, and you can sign up your kid age 9 all the way to 18 for our three different summer camps that are going on this summer, uh, but also you could like MCAT on Facebook. You could even follow MCAT on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like Wake Up Missoula on Twitter at, M at uh, 
Wake Up Missoula. You can like Wake Up Missoula on Facebook. And to check us out, we have our very own website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. You had to spell it out twice. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Oh, I got to get back in my camera. Okay. <laughs> so, you guys, um, this is what's going on in your community. So, what I have is... Um, <clears throat> Events for Saturday. I've got music events for Saturday. It's because there's lots of music events going on. And it's the perfect time to get out and about. It is. And then I've got some stuff for you guys on Sunday, too. Because I never do Sunday events. And because it's so small. It... Yeah, it's so small. Like, it never... Yeah. Okay, so this is what's going on tomorrow night. Um, starting at 4 p.m., we go over to Tense Food Vineyard and Winery for wine tasting and live music by Rot Gut Wines. Ooh, that starts at 4. Um... Bear, so the Northside Kettle House is starting for the month of April. They are doing a Saturday night music and dinner series every Saturday night, the month of April. Um, so it starts at 5:30. It has got food by Burn Street Bistro and then live music from Beargrass Bluegrass. If only get yeah. to do something about the acoustics in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just kidding. We'll see. So this is their first <laughs> installation of that. So that starts at 5, 5:30. Um, over at Imagination Brewing Company, they've got a Saturday Night Live music series with Go Go Motion that starts at 6. Go Go Motion is, plays primarily soul and funk music. Ooh. Yeah. Jeff Carroll will be at the Missoula Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Uh, also at 6 is the Loose String Band at Draftworks Brewing Company. So all of our breweries have got uh, their music geared out, so you just kind of got to pick and choose which one sounds the best for you. And then um, over at the Union Hall at 7.30, we've got Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance. Ooh. Yeah, $6 for members, $9 for non-members. Uh, workshop at 7.30, all dances are taught and called. So if you have no idea what it is, you can even show up and just dance. Yeah, you just show up and it's it's very good setting. Mm -hmm. And you just basically, um, you don't need a partner. No, they'll tell it's you always, how to do they, it. They provide a partner and if you don't like the partner that you're with, you change after a, a, a good stanza and a variation of the song. It's kind of like an arranged marriage. It's like a hoedown. It's like a hoedown marriage. It's like a, 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 you it's get like married a at Scandinavian the end. hoedown. Scandinavian hoedown. Yep. Where you get married at the end. Yeah. Well, you don't know that. Either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. In Montana, if you're in the same room with a woman for more than five minutes, you're married. <laughs> it's called common law. It's called common law. <laughs> and you have to have a chaperone if you're going to be driving in a car with a sheep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, still, right. it's still a law. Is it really? Yeah. It's like and um, single women can echo fishing. Yeah, uh, on uh, Sundays. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, so don't even try it. The sheep one's my favorite one. <laughs> so weird. Also, another good one is that if you bring an animal or a horse to school, the horse, ha the school has to take care of it. They pulled that in the 50s at Hellgate High School. Oh, did they? That's funny. Yeah, the school has to, is required to take care of it. That's pretty great. Um, okay, so more music for tomorrow night. Uh, Floral uh, from Colorado and Holy Totem and Woch Tech. We have stage one twelve at nine. Um, Walking Corpse Syndrome and Switch Off Safety is going to be at the Dark Horse at nine. Uh, that's only five bucks. It's metal. Uh, Absolutely with Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander at nine. Tom Catmull's Radio Static will be the Union Club at 9.30. Pay Dirt will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. And the KC Donahue Band will be at the Top Out Lounge at 10. So that's music for your Saturday. Up, up next, I've got a couple of Sunday events. So over at the Missoula Public Library, they've got a family story time starting at 2 p.m. This usually includes songs and art activities on the Dragon Rug in the children's area. Um, Dan Dubeck plays Draftworks Brewing Company at 5. Over at Imagination Brewing Company, they've got a Sunday Night Jazz with Monk's New Brew. And then over at Taste Buds Kitchen at 6 on Sunday, they have a sushi and dumpling cooking class. And then over at Great Burn Brewing Company, they've got a stand-up comedy at 6.30 on Sunday. And then our last event for Sunday is Jazz Martini Night at the Bathlander at 9. Cool. Yeah. So as always, you guys, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana, um, the Missoulian, and the Independent for more events. Usually I find my events from MissoulaEvents.net. So you can go in there. You can see all the events I talked about. You can even see more events that I didn't mention. Yeah, so that's where you find your community events in Missoula. Cool, and I have a nice little transition video between um, uh, uh, events and city council, and it's the um, UM Percussion with Piano, and it's, it's really good. I, I was listening to this earlier this morning, and I was like, I gotta show this 
even like this, even if it's like a moment of his end. But this is gonna be on tonight, starting at six thirty. If you don't watch the whole thing, but here's cool. a little taste. channel 189 at 6 30 it's it's great it's uh nice music uh, you got uh dr bob they call him um and he's a great percussionist and he's been with this school program for a while over for like it's like well over 20 years that's like, awesome yeah bob ledbetter yeah oh, cool. i love bob bob ledbetter that sounds like a really great percussion like last name i know it's pretty awesome. All right, you guys ready for um, some city council stuff? So what? today they were talking about uh, updating the cell phone ordinance because, Ooh. well, the cell phone ordinance is being updated to reflect the complications <laughs> it has facing. And here's a quote from um, presenter Andrew Scott, which basically kind of encompasses what kind of what's really going on to the rules that unless a defendant comes into the trial and basically admits that they were using the phone to text or have a conversation, we cannot prove that the violation has occurred. And the exceptions are so broad that it doesn't address the reason we wanted the ordinance in the first place, which is distracted driving. If you look at just the sheer numbers of tickets that have been written and the numbers of trials that we've done and the number of trials that we've lost, we're not asking for this because of losing trials. We've lost eight trials in 2015, five in 2014, about five in 2013. Compared to the number of tickets that have been written, which is in the thousands, the, the trial losses are a drop in the bucket. All right, of course, uh, basically what he's saying is that if you want to contest the ticket that you got for allegedly talking on your cell phone, you'd win. <laughs> like straight up. It's like he's basically just admitting on 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 uh, on the city council um, <laughs> public safety and health is that uh, the cell phone ordinance is you basically can say is like you know I was on my iPod looking for music. I was or like, like, and you can totally get away with it. Or using like GPS. Like yeah. no, I was using GPS. <sighs> All right. So this is basically. Um, Ambiguities in the existing ordinance have led to difficult in prosecuting violators, the ones who contest it. Uh, the revision offers clarification and will make enforcement easier. Um, additionally, the 2012 ordinance um, embarked 50% of revenue for ordinance um, education. So basically, the tickets would half of it went to enforcement and the other half went to education, and they want to reallocate education into more enforcement. So they want to enforce a little more in terms of that. So of course, um, and here is another quote of uh, why, um, wait, 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 hold on. Where was I again? Okay, here it is. Yeah, this is why they're updating this. We're not asking for this because of losing trials. We've lost eight trials in 2015. Oh. All right, so we already kind of went through that. Sorry, I showed like two quotes back to back. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is uh, basically they want to update this ordinance to make it more uh, geared towards distracting, distracted driving rather than talking on cell phones while driving or scratching your face with a cell phone. <laughs> it was interested to uh, it was interesting to find that if you wanted to. Uh, fight the ticket, you'd, you'd have like a 90 to 100% chance of winning. He'd just basically say, like, I wasn't using it to talk on the phone. Plus, there's so many hands-free devices out there anyways. So this next quote is from our very own Harlan Wells, uh, the uh, 
opposition voice of the city of Missoula, usually. Uh, <laughs> and um, he believes that the police should have a policy and not an ordinance to enforce the cell phone ordinance, since the police, uh, you know, they, they don't only have one distraction, they have multiple distractions, like they have a work cell phone, they have a, um, a computer, mm -hmm. a radio, and sometimes maybe they have a more of a public cell phone, so if they wanted to talk to other deputies, and you know they have a, like a phone that they can call back to work at the station, and then they have another cell phone because they don't want to congest the um, scanners. Uh, so this is what uh, Harlan Wells had to say. I understand there's a perception that, the, that there's a double standard, but I, I can promise you that the talking on the phone part is such a small distraction compared to all the other stuff that's going in the car. I mean, we're allowed to go buck 20, buck 35 on the highway. Regular people aren't. They're around town 10, 20, 30 miles an hour over the speed limit, even with lights on, because there's a, a, a rush. I mean, I, I get it. I think it's more of an education thing for people to understand that the, the deputies aren't talking to their girlfriend. They're, they're doing work. So I would really... And there's not just deputies. We've got marshals. We've got state troopers. We've got Secret Service when they come into town. We've got federal all kinds of federal agents that are using cell phones that this is a blanket ban on. And I and you know police are held to a higher standard. If it's the law, they ha then they are breaking their oath if they have to do this. So I just think it's too it, it's too encompassing to not give a waiver for law enforcement and or all, or leave all emergency stuff in there. Yeah, so that was one of the things that um, Harlan wanted to bring up. It's like a lot of emergency vehicles, they need to have multiple ways of contacting the hospital or the police station and this and that. So there should be a special um, leniency towards people on their cell phone because you know the one thing that people were like always making fun of the police because they're always seeing them on their cell phones and all this stuff you know you always see like yeah. a police officer on their cell oh, phone yeah, definitely. or on their computer or mm -hmm. on this or this or that it's because they have to do so much in their little space so mm -hmm. it's almost like well, it's, yeah. Almost impossible for them not to be distracted. And so they're giving us these tickets yet breaking the law on their own. So it makes sense that they would want to change it and because you know like Police officers, yeah, are, can't also be above the law. Yeah. So Good. they kind of like they went back and forth on this, um, talking about like you know EMTs and police officers and firefighters mm -hmm. about all these kind of things going back and for, forth for like emergency vehicles. Yeah. And um, this is uh, well moving on more about the ordinance in terms of like they want to like put a whole like kind of blanket field about just they what they want to enforce instead of calling this like a cell phone ordinance they want this to be to me like a more distracted while driving ordinance that's okay. probably what they should have done a while ago yeah rather than just cell phone because it's not just a cell phone anymore it's uh it's everything it's like, everything it's your ipod mm -hmm. um uh google maps usually mm -hmm. the smart thing to do is like you put in an address before you just start driving yeah. well even even not using that stuff like i don't have a smartphone but you know like when i'm driving around like sometimes i have a stick set sometimes i'll like eat while driving and fiddle with the radio. Like that's totally distracted yeah. driving. You know, and I don't even have a cell phone involved. It's eating and fiddling with the radio while trying to drive a stick shift. Yep, but here is Andrew Scott again with the very last quote for the city council meeting. People were very concerned about, you're gonna take away my right to use my phone while I'm driving. Well, that was five years ago and people have learned it's a safety hazard now. Teenagers who are getting their license know you don't text and drive now. Um, society's changed in the last five years. I don't think we're going to be stepping on too many toes to move in and say it's time to get rid of some of these exceptions and just be safe. Okay. All right. So that's some closing thoughts yeah, from Andrew that makes Scott. Sense. Well, and also, um, what, like when I drive and if I text, I always text at red lights. Like, I don't text while I drive. Yeah. I stop, like, it's a red light, and then I text if, real quick, have, and then yeah. I put my phone away when I drive. Yeah, if I, I have I can't to. text anymore. My phone, like, I got the new iPhone S, oh, yeah. and it's so big, <gasps> and really? it's, like, almost impossible to text, like, e when I'm at a red light, even, and then because it changes, like, almost instantly. Yeah. It, it's like, okay, so if you want the light to change, just take out your cell phone, because the Let's light will change texting. almost instantly. Because that's yeah. usually how it always works. It's always like, oh, I've been sending this light for a while. Maybe I could text somebody about something. Yeah. And then as soon as you take out your phone, it's like, oh, the light's green. Time to go. Yep. yep. So remember, if you ever stopped at a, a red light 
pull out your phone because it'll turn green almost automatically. It's like the light knows. <laughs> the light knows what you're talking <laughs> but, okay. about. Okay. What I was talking about before is that yeah, it's it's really interesting that that this whole ordinance had like no teeth. Yeah. It's like it's like so many people got tickets for no reason. If they would have known they would have congest- contested their, uh, uh-huh. their ticket, they would have gotten off. It was just like I was yeah. on my cell phone. It was like it was, true. It was like yeah. And then the police officer has to come in who um, gave you the ticket and it's yeah. like yeah, they're totally talking on their cell phone. It was like. I'm yeah. Caught again. But yeah. most people are just like, oh, just give me the ticket, I'll pay it off, and then, then move on. That's yeah. people people just seem to don't fight it. People exactly. just kinda like accept it. But, I know, which which is not good. But then there's they there's fight eight it. people yeah. who are always fight every little thing. Mm-hmm. But and I know someone that got a ticket and then she fought it and actually won. Yeah. yeah, because they had no evidence. They had no proof. It's like it's it's all like, you know And um, is it is it personal privacy? Like it's an invasion of privacy to look at your phones? Is that why they like? No, the don't idea get is proof? like. Um, I mean, the police officer. It's your like in your car. It's your property. But the officer is looking outside on the public road that you use. So they enforce the laws on the public road for the public. And when they look at you from the outside on the yeah. public street, it's like they're able to look. It's kind of like uh, you can't get um, arrested for like if you're like on the public street and you look in in the neighborhood yeah. and you're just like you're spying on me. It's like I'm on a public street. Yeah. You can't do anything about no. it. Only if you're on private property. Well, I was. I also wonder if they look at the like time the person dialed the phone call or exactly. Look at the time they, they, they texted. They, they, don't, like, they, do they, they will ask. They're, are they allowed they will to ask do that? You. They can ask you. I mean, but, the police officer can be like, "Hey, could I see? Could I see your phone?" And then you basically you don't have to give them your phone. Yeah. You don't have to do a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, it's not in the ordinance. Yeah, I mean, it's like you don't have to do anything. You just, if you get pulled over, it's just like, is there a problem, officer? It's like, oh, you know how fast you were going or your lights weren't turned on? Usually, mm-hmm. that's usually why people get pulled over is because their lights aren't turned on because downtown is usually well lit at night. Yep, it really is. I've definitely been guilty of that, of like <laughs> I, forgetting to turn my lights on because downtown ridiculous. is so well lit. The parking yeah. garage is like really well lit. Mm-hmm. I'm in the parking garage, I drive out, I was just like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. And then like the lights aren't on, and it's like, oh, da, 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 da. Yeah. I get pulled over. It's like, you know why I pulled you over? It's like, no. It's like, your lights were on. Really? Yep. And they're just like, it's yeah, the like lights that. are really bright. It's like, oh. Oh, okay. Thank you then. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks, officer. Thanks, officer. Yeah, I know that's pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, but without further ado, um, yeah, that's basically kind of wraps it up for the city uh, council report mm-hmm. about if, this cell phone ordinance, which is kind of enlightened. Yeah. Me a if you bit. guys um, have any comments or questions about the cell phone ordinance, you can always uh, just check us out on Facebook at uh, Wake Up Missoula, and you can leave your questions, comments, or ideas on there for us to respond and to. And I'm I'm really surprised too. Like you know, this is. It's, 2012 is when they put this in, and yeah. people were like really like up in arms about it too. Yep, I remember that. But now everyone just kind of accepted it. Yeah, everyone's okay with it. Yeah, but of course, uh, we, it is a Friday, which means it's Ooh. flagship Friday, and this is a uh, um, a video highlighting um, the kids from Hellgate High School. Oh, great! And MCAT, where it is apparently a haunting in Missoula. <laughs> I love Pop Tarts, it's gonna be so Watch out, this is made with 3% vampire fang, you know? Hey, dude, what's your problem? Well, I mean, I, I just noticed you got Pop Tarts, and you know, there's two of those. Two per package, two Pop Tarts. Dos, do no dos, eins, zwei. You know, one, two. Uh, what are you trying to explain? Nothing, no, no, nothing. Just, just making an observation about Pop Tarts. Okay. Yeah. You know, there's two of them. Two, two Pop Tarts. Uh, oh, crap. Thanks. Oh, God. There, 
months. You mean like winter's never gonna end? Sorry about this, Autumn. That's okay. You can't control the weather. So why'd you take us here? Oh, my grandfather used to own this place. It's pretty lame. Yeah. It, it is kind of lame. Yeah, I, I never knew my grandfather. Okay. Sounds like a cool guy. Yeah, he's not working. Is there anything interesting about this place? Yeah, a kid died here a couple years ago. I think I heard about that. Did, uh, was it, wasn't it like something, uh, you know, like... The vending machine sucked him in, and then, like, was, was possessed. That sounds like something the myth people you hear at airports that if you go to the bathroom, they'll suck you down the toilet. Yeah, there's other sketchy places like Idaho. Idaho? Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, he uh, just completely, like, left. So, did anyone look for him? Yeah, they, there's like no trace of him left. It's like he didn't even exist. Well, how do you know he was even taken then? My friend Neil was the last person to see him alive. Wow, that's really scary. Don't worry, we'll protect you. Are you guys coming? Hey, an elevator. Yay. Welcome to my elevator. Okay. <laughs> Which fly? Um, I really don't know. Well, guys, what floor do you want? I want to go to the roof. <laughs> I mean, Charlie only goes to the third floor. You look like me. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll just go to the next floor. Number two it is. Goodbye. So we're all like gonna hang out and get ice cream or something? I thought you stayed on the elevator. Charlie and I just kind of broke up in things like, we're just kind of taking our own spiritual paths. We had our ups and downs. It's just better. Well, I guess you can hang out with us. So are you like single now? Well, I just don't like being tied down that often because you know, my boyfriends don't usually last that long. Okay guys, follow me. I know the perfect way. Should we? I don't know. Yes, we can. Come on. You just met her. You don't know what she's like. Ah. Jackson, this isn't funny. Where are you? Jack, you're just trying to scare us. Oh, hey, uh, this is awkward. Hey, aren't you the kid that went, um, missing? How can you have been missing if he's been here the whole time? Uh, what are you talking about? I've only been here for like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, I, I don't recognize you. You've never been in the elevator before. This place has an elevator? We better get out of here. Not without Jackson. I've tried to get out. There's no way out. Well, how are we gonna get out? Follow me, I have an idea. Come on in, guys. What is this place? It's the way out. Trust me. I don't think I can trust you. Um, don't worry about it. Do you know what's going on? No, but this is a safe place. How do you know that? Because I own it. Be careful. Pop darts do contain three parts vampire thing. Don't worry. We're all friends here.
All right. So oh my there. gosh, that was like a little cliffhanger. <laughs> Are we gonna make a part two? Like, what's going on? It, it was like a goosebumps ending. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. I like that. That was really, really good. Those kids are so freaking funny. Yeah, a lot of them are really great. They really are. The, I think I think the Hellgate High School kids are my favorite videos. Yeah. Just because they're, they're you more know, mature. Yeah, they're more mature. They're funny. They get it. They get it. They've got really, they've got their own like humor. They've got like these, this really good dry humor. That's like, I love it. Those kids are yeah, great. Yeah, they're, they're extremely dry. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's, super dry. It's hilarious. Like it's I hilarious. always walk into the flagship office up there and it's like super hot, like all the time. It's like, why is it so hot? Okay, oh, open a window and it's like, and the flagship lady has like two sweaters on. <laughs> and it's like, I'm cold. She's got their menopause, poor thing. <laughs> well, no, she's, she's, she, she's not even that old. I know, I'm just she's kidding. Like, I don't know. Early 30s. Yeah. <laughs> poor thing. Maybe she's just cold. Yeah. She's Some people like, are just older than others. It's a little chilly, yeah. yeah. You don't seem like like you're ever like cold? Not really. Sometimes, but I got I got lots of hair. I got hair on my hair yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got hair growing out of his hair. Yeah, I got hair. It's really out weird. We I got hair everywhere but on my head. We've now. taken him to several <laughs> doctors. And they still don't know. <laughs> my hair just keeps growing. How does that happen, doctor? Is like. Get out. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> that would be funny to make a series of really silly medical videos. <laughs> Doctor, I just have hair growing everywhere. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Scott, what are you going to do this weekend? Well, I'm going to go to the doctor and ask about this hair problem happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this weekend, I'm doing some stop animation stuff with some kids. Yep. And hopefully making a, uh, they will probably want to make a sequel to the Alien movie, it's the one where the cat's like bursting out of the chest. Yeah, that was cool. That, uh, I, 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 I'm really happy about that. Like, I, think I showed you're Christian good. that and he lost it. He laughed really? so hard. <laughs> uh, especially like, I just kept on replaying the, uh, the cat bursting out of the chest yeah. scene over and over again and he just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he showed it's me this hilarious video on YouTube. I'll have to show you. It's uh, it's called Sad Affleck. <laughs> it's Ben Affleck. Um, basically, uh, Ben Affleck and uh, Harvey, Kate you know, the guy who played Batman and Superman, yeah. they were being interviewed by a British guy. And like Ben Affleck's like kind of like sitting there, and um, and the British guy was like, Hey, yeah. So uh, how do you feel about this movie? Since um, he all the all these reviews are out of people basically saying that this movie is just like boring and not that good yeah. and stuff like that. And then um, Superman, while Superman's like talking, like music cuts out and then it's uh, Simon and Garfunkel, The Sound of Silence, <laughs> playing in the background and it's just like Ben Affleck's face is just like, it's like his whole world is crashing. Really? Down. It's, it's just so like crestfallen? Yeah. I, I was like, oh. Oh, poor Ben Affleck. It, it's so, it's, what movie was that? It was for Batman versus Superman. Oh, okay. I saw that movie. Yeah, what'd you think of it, Scott? Not good. It happened. It happened. I own I, like everyone just kind of like everyone wants this movie to be good, so good, but it's fairly boring. There's just like there's a lot in this movie, but there's it's like no real plot, more special effects. Yeah, it's all flash, no substance. Yeah, totally. Well, that's the problem with movies these days. Is well, that's kind of how it we've is. We've been spoiled. Like, we, like I watch all those Marvel movies, and Marvel has it down. Marvel knows exactly like you build a. A relationship with these characters yep. and throughout all these movies and in this movie you just don't care about the people really it, like even if you, you know you already know the characters yeah because they they aren't such they honestly between Marvel and DC it's always like DC has uh, better characters mm -hmm. it's always had better characters compelling stories but that's why they have such a high um, expectations yeah. in their movies like, yeah and not to mention you know, Christopher Nolan who made the Batman trilogy which is now like considered one of the best trilogies mm. of all time because mm -hmm. with most trilogies like always like there's there's just okay you know yeah. like the first movie comes out it's like oh cool that's like introducing the characters second okay. movie it's just like oh it's pretty good but there's a plot twist yeah and then third movie is always like if it's sci-fi it's always like let's time travel yeah like, and, or yeah, you just yeah. call it um part three origins yeah and it's always like it's a like prequel, prequel. it's like the first okay. movie was the prequel the yeah. first movie you don't need a prequel it's yeah. like we want to learn more about this character that you barely got to know in the first movie. It's like, well, who and cares? It's, it's understandable because, you know, Superman and Batman and all those characters, they've already been so, like, built they've up. They've been.
been been Over built the up years that they don't have any they, that it's like the the directors or whoever wrote it just felt no need to really add any no. extra characteristics to them because they're already the, so well known. And the issue is that you don't want to make uh, it's if you ever seen any like even like the show or the comic book, it's not about the heroes. It's mm. about the villains. Yeah. If you have a good villain, and then the, basically it's kind of like. The idea of the movie is like the superheroes are the antagonists because mm-hmm. they have to stop the bad guy from their evil plan. Mm-hmm. That's the idealism of antagonists and protagonists. Protagonists, this is just like basic movie law, and it's basically saying like the protagonists, their job is to do something and get stuff done. Antagonist yeah. is supposed to stop the protagonist, so therefore Batman has always been the antagonist in all his stories. Even the bad guy, I want to rob this bank. Batman, no, you can't rob this bank. So he yeah. stops people from doing things. Yep. Yeah. And so, um, I I don't know. I haven't seen it. And I'm really curious as to like the storyline. It's long. Is it's, it? It's uh, and long and you, boring and it's, no real development. Yeah. I'm I'm All sorry. All flash and like, no substance. Yeah. Flash no substance. Well, and that makes a lot of sense because that's kind of how movies are lately. Like they put so much money into special effects, so much money into all the flash, and then the really kind of, when it comes down to, like the characters and the plot line and the story, it's just like. Oh, and then you got like the, you know then idea. you have these new directors that come in and they're just like, oh, you guys did such a good job on this one indie film. Let's give you a whole buttload of money, and then they just completely drop the ball no on these movies. It's like, do. oh, we're gonna give you Superman. It's like, uh, I don't even like picture. Superman. Yeah, yeah, and they're given movies that they don't like or don't feel connected to. Mm-hmm. And the reason their indie movies worked was because they had a they, connection. They to had it. it was passion. It was, yeah, it, it's like you need people who are passionate about the characters. Who are into it, and they're just like making movies just to make movies, just to you know garner money. And you know they, I feel like they want as much hype about it as um, Star Wars had. And this is movie reviews by Scott. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we just start doing this. <laughs> oh, this is well. My dad takes me to every movie ever exists. It's like, oh, there's this one movie play you want to go see. It's like, no, I don't want to see John Goodman again. Okay, well, I got us two tickets. We're going right now. Yeah. <laughs> Aesop, what are you going to do this weekend? Probably watch TV. Yeah? <laughs> What's good on TV? What do you like to watch? Well, they have that, what is it, that, um, not only Me TV, but the other one, the movie channels. So oh, I yeah. switch back and forth. Cool. Nice. That sounds good. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch those old shows like Gilligan's Island. Yeah, all your classics. Yeah, all the classics. Yeah, I watched a pretty fun movie the other <laughs> night. It's called The Warriors, and it was made in 1979. That's a cult classic. I'm sure everyone's seen I, it. The Warriors are a really good movie. It's awesome. I didn't. I saw it when I was younger because I recognized some scenes, and then didn't see it again. You know, saw it again the other night. And I just thought it was great. It was super fun. I was impressed. I was like, this is. It's awesome. We could probably just like keep this going for another. Well, well, let's do some social media, and then yeah. let's see if we can probably pull this off so that the switcher switches just off like right where we wanted to switch off. That sounds so, great. So, if you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash Wake Up Missoula. So nice, you made sure write it out twice. You could like us on our Facebook page of the same name. Yeah. You could follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. You can like Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can check us out on Facebook. And to find out more information about us, just oh. go to MCAT.org, which will be coming up momentarily. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sometimes I, when I click the website and the link always, always yeah. sends us, but of course. Yeah, so check out MCAT.org. Um, you can find out lots of all the programs that we show, all the programs that we air. You can watch live. You can watch now. Um, you can watch if pre-tape. It's we have video later. on demand. Mm-hmm. It's great. MCAT is yeah. great. It's all about the future, and we have everything that we have ever shot is able to watch from our website, yep. MCAT.org. We've got forms for summer camps as well as media assistant grants. Yep. Uh, you can check check out our yeah check check us out on MCAT. It's a great website. No, but without further ado, um, thanks for joining me. It's we're gonna have a great weekend. It's gonna be beautiful and sunny, so get out as much as you can. And for Wicked Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I'm Noel McVoy. We'll see you on Monday. Here's ASAP at 09.